Hey, listen, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Maurice. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and I just want to greet every single person. Those of you who are in the room and for some of you who are watching online, uh, especially if you're new or you're new-ish here to the community and you're a guest, we just want to say welcome. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day. We don't take that lightly, and we appreciate that. And here's the thing. It's our hope uh, that you would navigate this world alone and so that you would get, find a place in this community because you belong. As we get started today, today's going to be a little bit different. As you can see, you came in and there is a uh, inflatable jacuzzi, right, smack dab in the middle of the auditorium. Here's the deal. We do something here at Ascent and in the, faith, in the Christian faith community called baptisms. And today, there's going to be a couple of people who are taking that step of being baptized. And today is a day of celebration that we get to come alongside them as a community and to celebrate that. Uh, but before we move any further into that or even into the sermon, I just want to take a moment to slow down and just uh, what is baptism just briefly. And then I want to actually extend that invite to some of you who may be in the room. See, baptism is this idea within scripture that we see it was so important that even Jesus himself got baptized. It's this moment in a person's life where they begin to recognize who God is, that they begin to sense that something is happening on the inside of them and baptism is that external, it's that, that outward response towards something that's taking place on the inside. Somebody who's recognizing Jesus Christ as Lord, and they're taking that step of faith. And as a faith community, we get to come alongside people and, and, and affirm that and to celebrate that. Because here's the deal, all of us need rhythms in our life where we're reminded of who God is in our life. Baptism is one of those rhythms we do things here called communion. We gather here on Sundays. Can I tell you that, that when we gather here on Sundays, it is a gathering of people from various different backgrounds with all different types of stories. None of them are the same. And Sundays are one of those moments and one of those rhythms where we remind each other of who God is. Can I tell you that's what a little bit of that worship song is? Every single Sunday that we sing. When we sing worship and we begin to sing out, when we begin to declare, I am a child of God. When we begin to declare that you are a good, good father and we're singing to Jesus Christ, we're taking moments to remind ourselves, we're taking moments to acknowledge who God is. And I don't know about you, but sometimes my life needs those reminders. And so today somebody's going to be taking that step and many of people are going to be taking that step, but maybe you didn't plan to take that step today. Can I tell you that some of our greatest baptisms are ones where people didn't plan they woke up that Sunday morning, they came to church. There was something about whether it was the setting or whether it was the worship or whether all a couple of months leading up to that moment, God was prodding on their heart. And they began to put the pieces together and begin to say that maybe this moment is my moment. And as a faith community, we come alongside those people. And today, I want to extend the invite to you. You may be, be considering that. You may be thinking, today's my day. You may be sensing something happening inside of you. You're like, you know what, Maurice, I don't have it all together. I'm trying to figure things out. I still have questions. I've got doubts. But I know that God is real and he is doing something in my life. Can I tell you that you're a prime candidate? Today, we, over in this area, there's going to be some, somebody that's going to be lingering right outside those, uh, that, that, those curtains right there. We got extra clothes, extra T-shirts, extra shorts. We even have extra underwear if you need underwear. Some of you may be even thinking to yourself, this is kind of weird on a Sunday morning. I guess what we're trying to communicate is no matter what, what we want to remove any obstacle out of the way to communicate to you, let nothing stop you from taking an amazing step that even Jesus himself took. Because your story matters. And what the faith com Christian community is, is a group of people coming alongside one another full of stories. And today we get to lean into that idea of story and the story of the Christian faith community. There's actually a person who's going to be sharing his story today. Uh, Joey is one who's going to be getting baptized today. And Joey is one I actually have had the privilege to meet. But he has uh, a deep roots here at Ascent that even are way before I even got here. And Joey has an amazing story that predates me and probably predates some of you that's in the room. Uh, but as we step into this, I want you to be considering... Is it not just joy, is it you this morning that's going to be taking that step? Is it you that's probably thinking about that? If you have questions, if you're wondering, I, I, I'm kind of sitting in this space, but I need to talk to somebody. Would you just meet us over here in that area, maybe right outside those curtains, 
And I want to extend that offer to you as well. As we lean into today's topic of story and gathering of people of stories, uh, we decided to take a listen to Joey's story. So if you would look to the screens and listen up towards Joey's story. Well, good morning, Ascent. Hey, my name is Chris. I run our high school and middle school programs here, and I got to introduce you to Joe. This is one of the very first high school students I got to meet 10 years ago when I, when I started this job here at Ascent. But you were here before me. So Joe, you know, tell, tell us, tell, you know, let's, let's rehash a little bit. Like, how did you get involved? When did, you know, when, when did our relationship start? How did all that get going? Yeah, so um, it all started. Uh, I'm great friends with uh, Bill's son, Jackson. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would hang out Fridays and Saturday nights playing like video games um, and that quickly turned into hey can you guys help set up uh, at the Omni um, and so we would spend our Saturday evenings like setting up and then Sundays tearing down um, and that quickly turned into uh, when Ascent bought uh, this building yeah. um, helping setting up there and that going into uh, um, meeting you on yeah. Monday nights at Ascent. Um, what do we call it? Uh, we called it Mansent. <laughs> <laughs> called it Mansent, there's a lot of boys there. Uh, <laughs> since then rebranded, but <laughs> it was appropriate yeah. at the time. Um, yeah, and um, from there, that was, God, what, nine, 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that just quickly became um, such a great time and mm. uh, didn't know that yeah. um, meeting you 10 years ago would develop into such a strong relationship uh, today. Correct me if I'm wrong, but prior to coming here, you'd never been to church, like you didn't grow up doing any of that? This is... Yeah, my, uh, growing up, um, my family is Christian, but we were more of like the c &E, come here, or <laughs> go to Christmas and uh, Easter services. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just um, when high school happened, this is, uh, Ascent became my home and the beginning of my foundation of faith and um, actually hearing and understanding and believing the gospel yeah. and Jesus' story for the first time. So. so, you know, in just a couple of minutes, we get to baptize you, Joey. And, 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 you know, following Jesus isn't new for you, but it's, but you know, something about now, something about this day and, and this season felt like the time to go public with that. Tell us, tell us why. Yeah, um, it's something that I've been toying on or toying with for uh, probably a good part of five, six years now. Yeah. Um, and just being like, oh, I want to wait for the right moment, but, mm. um, I don't think that's what Jesus wants. He doesn't want to <laughs> wait for the right moment, moment for um, this to happen. Like wait for something to align perfectly with your plan, or like our plans, we want it to align with his. Um, and um, while I consider myself devoted uh, mm. to God, um, I think the next step in my faith is to publicly mm. uh, devote my faith to um, everyone and not just people privately in my life. Um, and uh, God, or Jesus, when he was here on earth, he, he got baptized. Mm. He commanded people to do it. Mm. Um, and I just want to uh, live the life like Jesus. So um, I think baptizing is the next step for me. Uh, you live a life that, that I hope people pay attention to, and I love you making a step like this as a way to declare who you are so that people see you even more clearly uh, than they maybe already do. This this story that you're saying, it's this is this is what God does. This is what God's that God God loves to write a story next to someone. And your story is his story. And I'm just so glad you get to share that with us. Yes. What you will see, that's right, that's right. I'm actually gonna have us clap one more time, not at right now, but you'll see that today is all about celebrations. And when it comes to celebrations about someone taking a step like this, it's not golf clap, right? So we wanna celebrate in a big way and we're gonna to get to the baptism in just a moment, but there's gonna be some things that we take care of before that. And what I love about uh, Joey and his story is that what we'll see not only with Joey's story, but even with yours and with some of the people who are getting baptized today is that our faith journey is very personal, but it was never meant to be private. And because of that, we get a chance to celebrate with those that are around us. So for those who may be considering being baptized, for those who are getting baptized, can we put our hands together for that celebration real quick? Come on. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Well, a little bit later, we're going to have the kids come in and they're going to have poppers. And I'm sure they're going to be a lot louder than we are, but we got to join in with them. All right. 
hey, listen, right before I get started, you came in and there was something on your seat. There was a piece of paper uh, that, uh, that was Thanksgiving baskets. Uh, every single year here at Ascent, uh, if you're new or you're newish here, we do something that's called Thanksgiving baskets. And we get a chance to be a part of uh, blessing and helping those that are in need during this Thanksgiving time who may not have a Thanksgiving otherwise. And we're proud to be a part of that. A part of our Justice and Mercy ministry is leaning into this idea, or not just this idea, but this initiative of Thanksgiving baskets. And next week, I believe it's next week that we're going to be packing boxes together to take to those families. And we're going to be in need of some of the items that's on that list. So would you just do us a favor? Maybe it's after service, you're going to Safeway. Maybe you're, you know, you're shopping this week for your own family. Would you grab one, two of those items and bring it to the church so that we can be a blessing to those that are around us? We made a commitment a long time ago that God could trust us with resources. And if you're new or you're newish to around here to Ascent, uh, you don't just give to Ascent, but you give through Ascent. And we have made a commitment no matter what our situation looks like that God could trust us to be a church that exists for the good of our city. So would you take that piece of paper home with you and would you remind yourself when you're shopping about that, all right? As we get started today, we are starting a brand new series, and it is entitled God's, excuse me, Your Story is God's Story. Uh, I like this title that we're leaning into, and this came about uh, as we begin to, you know, as a team, we got together and we started thinking about uh, different people's stories. And we started to think about the even story of the Christian faith and the Christian narrative and how special stories are. And throughout all of Scripture, there's a bunch of stories, And story after story and after story, but the reality is, uh, as people who are walking with people, and maybe you know some people as well, uh, we begin to notice some disconnect Uh, in our own lives and even those that we're leading. And as a team, we started to get together. We started wrestling with some of the ideas that people are facing in a season like this. And some of the things that came about was we started to think about how some people are beginning to disconnect, and even ourselves, not just people, ourselves, are disconnecting their story from God's story. It's sort of this compartmentalizing. It's sort of this idea that uh, I'm doing things over here and then God is so awesome over here, but I got things to work on over here. And our hope in this entire uh, entire series that we're leaning into is around this idea. And this is going to be mine. It's going to be setting the foundation full of encouragement and affirmation this morning to remind us that your story is part of God's story. You may be sitting here this morning, you may be thinking to yourself, Maurice, you don't even know my story. There's so much in my background. There's so many things that I deal with. There's so many things that I face. How could my story be part of God's story? As I've been teaching, as I've been, uh, excuse me, as I've been uh, preparing and thinking about this series, I've been thinking about what that means to us as a faith community and what it looks like when we come in alignment to say that, you know what, the good, the bad, and the ugly There's been someone outside of myself that's been right along with me in my story. And truth be told, God's writing our stories still to today. I want to start our time together with a question. Uh, This question is, do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you just aren't good enough? Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you just aren't good enough. Like no matter what you do, your shortcomings continue to get in the way of you being better. You do your best to be a good parent and you watch your attitude towards your kids and it's on the way to church that you've worked on it and then on the way home, you find yourself with a bad attitude towards your kids. You adopt better eating habits, but it's short-lived because work is stressful. It's been a long week. And then you take a late night snack or the leftover Halloween candy from your kids. How many of us, we try to have a better prayer life? We do our best to be better at, you know what, I'm going to commit to this. This was a good week, you know, or a good Sunday, and that that message was for me. And you know what, I'm going to try my best to pray. But you end up giving up because all you can think about is the sin that you keep asking forgiveness for. And it seems like that's the thing that gets in the way your relationship with God. You go to church, you even go to church on time, trying to be better, trying to do the right thing, trying to get things together. But the only thing that you can find yourself doing even as you enter into church is mindlessly drifting away or scrolling on social media. Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you just aren't good enough? 
Today's title of the message that I want to bring to us today, and it's going to be full of encouragement and affirmation, is this right here, am I too broken? Am I too broken? Would you bow your heads and pray with me? God, we wrestle every single day. There's so many stories that are in this place right now and so many things that we are battling, so many thoughts that are crossing our mind, and maybe not all, but there are some people in this room at this moment, and they're facing that question that I never adding up, and am I good enough? I pray right now, Lord, through your spirit, not through any sort of intellect, not through any sort of uh, 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 persuasive words or any sort of rhetoric, but I pray, Lord, by your spirit, would you just nudge us? Would you transform our hearts? Would you help us to see you and the power of what you did on the cross? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, This series that we're in around story is so important. Uh, Because there is some things that we talk to ourselves and we tell ourselves on a day in and day out basis. Uh, There was one researcher that started talking about the soundtrack of our soul. And the soundtrack that we rehearse in our soul and how much that has an impact on our life. Sometimes it's questions that cross our mind, but sometimes it's a repeating song over and over and over again. Sometimes we tell ourselves things around a narrative that we don't add up. The scripture I want to read for us this morning is actually this guy by the name of Paul. And I think Paul resonates with some of us this morning. It's a frustrating text, but it's also a comforting text when we know the context of the story. If this is you this morning, if you're, if you're reading this and this feels like you, can I just tell you, go home and read this. Because this story is for you And it's one that I always find myself going back to. Romans chapter 7, it says these words. I don't really understand myself. For what I want to do, what it, but excuse me, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I I inevitably find myself doing what is wrong. Check out the sentiment right here, verse 22. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin, that it is still within me. Look at this lament of Paul in verse 24. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? I think it's important when we talk about the narratives that we talk to ourselves and we tell ourselves. I think it's important when we talk about how Scripture has so much of a light that it sheds on our life. We don't emphasize and press people towards Scripture, press people towards small groups, press people towards coming to church because it's something that perfect people do. Can I tell you that there's no perfect people? And if you look for the perfect church, I got to tell you, it was wrong when when you walked in. Like, that's not the perfect church. There is no perfect church. It's going to be a bunch of stories of people who are messing up, who are trying to figure this thing out, who are stumbling through their own humanity. And can I just tell you that we press people towards it because I got to tell you, Paul's words is one that I need. Maybe you don't need Paul's words. But when I see Paul speaking, there's something about his words that I resonate with. And when I look at my relationship with God and when I look at my story and people talk about my story is a part of God's story and God is writing my story, there is a disconnect that lands with me. And it's hard for me to receive what God tells me. Because I'm one of those people who get down on my knees when I finally muster up enough to pray. And the only thing that is reciting in my mind is that soundtrack of my soul that I'm not adding up. 
that this sin that is continuing to be in front of me that I can't get away from, God must not love me because I keep coming back to him about this thing that I struggle with. I want to set just some groundwork as we jump into this topic. And I understand that this topic is actually a big topic. It's actually one that is uh, going to become something that is outside the realm of my expertise. How many of you know that life is too complicated for this sort of topic to be answered in 30 minutes? I have to confess that it's not only one-sided, but it's incomplete. My hope is to offer spiritual nourishment and healing this morning. For Scripture says, Jesus says these words, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of of God. There's an importance for the spiritual nourishment that we need, but he does not say that we will not need material things. We believe here at Ascent in Jesus and therapy. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. All right, all right, all right. I want to make sure I'm in this right house, okay? I, be- I say that because sometimes in, in spiritual circles, in Christian world in which I grew up in, sometimes uh, the, the, the spiritual leaders would actually take on too much on their plate. And then they not only became pastor, but then they became counselor and therapist, and they weren't qualified for that. And then they became financial p- planner, and they weren't qualified for that. And then they became a spiritual director, and then they weren't qualified for these other areas of life. And we here at Ascent believe in a holistic understanding of people. So when it comes to this topic of sin, when it comes to this topic of struggle, when it comes to this topic of bad habits and us continually to fight through this life with that, we believe in a holistic understanding. But I must say, when I look at Scripture, that so much and sometimes even debatable, not only so much cause, but sometimes even debatable, that all causes will have some sort of spiritual root cause. There's some sort of anchor. There's some sort of uh, spiritual rooting in what we face in our day-to-day life. And that is what I'm trying to tackle today. So here's the deal. I want to tackle that with the situation, the struggle, and the solution. You're probably wondering, Maurice, where you're going today. That's where I'm going. I'm going through the situation in the biblical text that we're reading today, the struggle and the solution. I want to start with the situation. Here's the biblical context of what we're reading uh, because we are a uh, a Bible-believing church, a, a faith community that leans on Scripture And has such a high authority in our life. Biblical context of what we're reading today is this guy named Paul is writing Romans chapter 7. Uh, Paul is writing this. Paul is an apostle of Jesus. But Paul's life didn't always start out as an apostle. He didn't always start out as this cool spiritual leader who was planting churches and doing great things for God. You might have heard about Paul. His His actually name before was Saul. And he was one that actually was well-learned in the scriptures by five years old. He would have been well-learned in the first five books of the Bible. Uh, Paul has lots of accolades. He has a clean bloodline, which in that day was so awesome, was something that was uh, particular for the elite, that you had a clean bloodline ethnically. But Paul also has a past. Some of us in the room have a past. Paul was a murderer of Christians. Paul was one who went around murdering those who called themselves Christians. A murderer turned follower of Jesus. Paul is writing this, but what I love about Paul is that when he writes, he does not remove himself from the struggle of humanity. In 1 Timothy 1.15, he talks about that I am a chief sinner amongst all. He says that God came to save all, and we must understand that I am the worst of them. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense power. Today, as we read Romans chapter 7, I want to highlight the subjects of chapter 7. And the subjects of chapter 7 is God's word and sin. If you read And you listen to Paul. He's talking about uh, two things that are at work. And he's talking about, I love God's law. I love who God is. I love what God is doing. I love who God is. I love that the standard that God has placed in my life. Can I just tell you just for a little bit, just a pause and let you know that God has a standard for our lives. It's not one that he takes and he beats over our head because we'll never add up. He, He puts a standard in place because love has boundaries. 
Does, doesn't your relationship with your friends and your family that's full of love or your spouse, it also has boundaries. Those boundaries are not there so that you can live a restrictive life, but it's there to, to say, this is how you express your love towards me. And God is saying, I have these things that are in place because I desire for you to express your love towards me as I have expressed it towards you. And so he says, I have a standard. And Paul says, you know what? I love God's standard. That's fine. I love God's standard. I am all in on God's standard. But there is another power that is at work in me. Do you see the two subjects in Romans 7? He's talking about God's standard, and then he's talking about, but this thing I can't get over, this sin that I keep stumbling across is also at work. Like there's God's law that's at work, there's God's standard that's at work, but then there's also sin that's at work in my life. And I know that you came here, maybe you came here, this may be your first time, or you're maybe your first time-ish uh, coming uh, to church, or maybe you're just kind of trying it out again, and it's like, all right, here we go. The pastor's talking about sin. It's going to be one of those sermons. Can I tell you, this ain't that. Can I just tell you that, that, that sin was defeated on the cross when Jesus expressed his love for all of humanity. But sin is something that he says, I, I want you to be aware of and I want you to flee from. I want you to make sure that you have an eye on because it keeps me from relationship with you. Sin separates me from you. Sin is this intimacy breaker. And while there's nothing that can keep me away from you and I will always express my love to you, sin will be something that tries to interrupt our relationship. So what Paul is doing here is he is acknowledging that even as a person who's trying to love God, love God's standard, I keep fumbling over myself. I keep fumbling over this particular sin. And the struggle that Paul has, that's the situation, that's the context, but then he goes into this struggle. And the struggle, one of the struggles is that Paul says, I, I, I. If you read all of Romans chapter 7, uh, Paul says I over 20 times. And he says, I keep struggling, and I mess up, and I want to do what I want to, uh, I want to do what's right, but I find myself not doing what is right, and I want to live for God, but I find myself not living for God, and I want to do what's right, but I find myself not doing what's right, and I want to do what I love, but I find myself doing what I hate. And he keeps saying over and over and over, I. There's this struggle that he has. And sometimes in our own life, don't we face that same struggle? Don't we find ourselves putting ourselves at the center I had one person, a mentor of mine, when I was uh, kind of lamenting and kind of talking about this struggle that I was having. And one of the things, one of the encouragements that he pressed towards me was that, you, you know, in some ways there's, a, there's a, a, a sense of pride when all you think about is yourself. That even when you come to God, even in your time of prayer, even when you come to, 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 to acknowledge who he is, it's about you. And there's some sentiment there that, of course, because I, you know, God's called me to come to him and there's some things that I have in my life and all these things. And then he says, bring all your cares on, you know, cast your cares on me because I care for you. Bring your struggles to me. I care for you. Bring the anxieties. Bring the things that you're facing because I care for you. And there is healing that is found in Jesus Christ. But there's also a side that I think keeps us from having a strong relationship with God because of the I struggle. Maybe this morning you have an eye struggle. And every time you find yourself trying to do what is good, I gets in the way. Do you find yourself trying to live right for God? Or do you try to find yourself uh, trying to be a better person, but I gets in the way? Paul is having this same struggle, and in some ways it's frustrating, but in some ways it's comforting. Because he doesn't leave us without a solution. There is a solution that Paul gives to us, and I think this is powerful. The solution that Paul gives to us is found in verse 25. He says, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I want to attack this in two ways. I want to attack this in one way of, of simply saying um, that the answer is found in Jesus. And I come from a very uh, awesome, a strong faith tradition where we acknowledge the power of Jesus. We acknowledge that there is deliverance found in Jesus. When I say deliverance, what do I mean by that? I, I mean that there are some things that when we come to God that we were struggling with, and because of his power, we don't struggle with it anymore. I believe in that power. I believe that God has the power of healing and the things that we can find in him. But can I also tell you that in this walk, 
Sometimes we stumble and we get frustrated and we give up on this Christianity thing because we keep trying this thing and we think that, well, why am I not healed? Well, why do I keep facing this same struggle? Why is it that God didn't answer my prayer? Why is it that there was nothing that was given to me when I can, I hear the testimonies, I hear people talking about it on Sunday and they're talking about all these good things, but why isn't that happening for me? There's not only a solution, but can I tell you that there's an unfortunate solution? What do I mean by unfortunate solution? Uh, there's a story in Scripture where God begins to talk about, where God begins to lean into this idea of the narratives and the labels that were given to us. And I want to land the plane here as this morning as we go into this thing called baptism and we start talking about what God is doing in our lives. Can I tell you that there's some labels and there's some narratives that many of us are carrying in this room. And in Genesis, this book, first book of the Bible, the whole story of Adam and Eve and God, one of the things that God, first things that he tells to humanity is who told you that? Adam and Eve, they're coming and they're facing the things that they're, that they're facing and they're going through some struggles and the things that they're going through. And Satan has entered another narrative that was outside of God's narrative. And they begin to have shame. They begin to have the soundtrack of shame and guilt in their life. And that narrative and that label is all on their life and they can't get past it. And God is saying, who told you this narrative? Can I tell you? Part of the solution that God offers us is not only a power that is found in him, but it's the labels that he gives us. See, the labels that we struggle with sometimes are that we're not enough, that I'm too messed up. Maurice, I have too much of a past. I should be further in life. I'm a horrible parent. I'm a bad spouse. My wife, my husband deserves better than me. I don't make enough, I'm not attractive enough, I'm too big, I'm too small, I don't meet the beauty standards that are shown on TV. I scroll on social media and I feel less about myself afterwards. There's labels, there's narratives that start to sink into our soul. But can I tell you, maybe you're a person who's struggling this morning and maybe you're a person who keeps fumbling over your own humanity. You keep struggling with this thing called sin. And can I tell you that God has not left you and that your story is part of God's story? And can I tell you that there is a power and a healing that is found in Jesus and part of that healing is the labels. My wife has been powerful in this when it comes to some of the things that I tell myself and I'm walking around the house and I'm being grumpy Maurice and she hears my, me, me being hard on myself about something in particular. Then she comes to me and she scolds me. She says, Maurice, I'm not going to have that in my house. And she says, if you're not saying about you what God is saying about you, I don't want to hear it. It's a reminder for you this morning that I don't know what label you're carrying. I don't know what narrative you're having. I don't know what soundtrack of your soul that you're listening to this morning. But I got I to tell you that if it's not the soundtrack that God has given to all of humanity, you might want to watch it. That you'll find yourself continuing to have a Romans chapter 7 moment where you're upset and you're frustrated and all you have is an I, I, I. But can I tell you that if you are going to talk about yourself... If you are going to have I moments, then it should be moments that God has said about you. This morning, every single time that I get up to speak, sometimes there's a struggle within myself. That Maurice, you're not learned enough. You, you don't know enough. You, Maurice, that there's something about you that no one's going to listen or that there's going to be something that you, you say that you're going to mess up and, and that it's not quite enough. That somebody that's on YouTube is way better than you and that they're going to go listen to a podcast. It's going to be way better than you that you're not a good enough pastor or preacher. Just this morning, one of our uh, founding team members, um, Dennis Lewis, who's on our board, every, team, every time that I get up, he doesn't even know that I'm going to say this, but every time that I get up to speak, Dennis Lewis pulls me aside and says, Mom, I'm going to pray for you. And now I find myself going to Dennis because one of the things that Dennis does is not only he just prays for me, but he begins to call out the things that God says about me. Just this morning, he says, Maurice, you are chosen. 
that God, I'm praying for Maurice because he is God's vessel, that he is your vessel, that he is your willing vessel. Would you empty him out that, God, you have chosen him? I don't know what soundtrack is playing in your life right now. And maybe it's God, maybe it's your community, but, but somebody needs to be reminding you. Something needs to be reminding you about the God narrative that is on you, that you are blessed, that you are a child of God, that no sin is too great for the love and the grace of Jesus Christ, that you are worthy, that you are made in God's image, that maybe you don't have it all together, but no one does. God doesn't desire perfection. He desires honesty, that you are loved. That no trauma or negative experience is too damaging, that God won't heal and that God won't love. That's not just arbitrary. That's not just something that I'm making up myself. That's from Scripture. And today, this morning, I, I, I want to interrupt. I, 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 want to, I want to disrupt that soundtrack with the soundtrack of God's heart. To, to let you know, if that's you this morning, maybe it's not a majority of people, but there's some people who, who keep tripping up over themselves. Can I tell you that the solution in this is that Paul shifts from I, 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 and he says, who will save me? And verse 25 says, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who has chosen me. Thanks be to God who has saved me. And can I just encourage you that there's going to be some moments that you vacillate between back and forth between verse 24 and verse 25. But that's part of this human experience. And I don't know what label that is. But the things that I face today when I get up to speak, I got to tell you that some of that narrative, that label, it doesn't fully go away. It's not as if it doesn't stick sometimes. It just doesn't stick as much. And that's this Christian walk. That on Monday you're going to feel good and Tuesday you're going to feel good. But then Wednesday it's going to feel like you went all the way back to square one. And I just got to encourage you that maybe that may be true, but the narrative of God is greater. That the story of God is greater. And that our story is God's story. I want to pray for you this morning and just let you know as we do go into this moment of baptism, again, that I'm offering this moment that there are going to be some people that are off to the side that are open to taking on your requests, maybe your questions. And again, this baptism moment is one that we simply say we are gathering around God to say we affirm this, that we are reminding one another of who God is. We're reminding one another of the labels and the narratives that God has given us. We're reminding one another of who God is. And so this morning, if that's you, I hope to see you off to the side. If not, don't worry. We encourage you to continue to think about it. Continue to consider maybe this is my moment. But there's somebody that I just want to pray for as we land the plane this morning, that's the person who's struggling with this sin thing. That's the person that's struggling with themselves. God's power is great. And his solution is when we shift from I to him and when we begin to rehearse his soundtrack and not the one that society tells us, not the ones that our parents gave us, not the ones that we tell ourselves, but the one that he has given us. Would you bow your heads and you pray with me? God, we, we, we acknowledge you this morning. We thank you for who you are. We celebrate who you are. And we thank you for your power, your grace, and your mercy. And we pray that as we move back and forth from verse 24 to verse 25, would you help us? Would you help us to be reminded of your soundtrack? Would you help us have a community and find community and find those in our life like those who would be a Dennis Lewis in our life? Would you, would you help us find people? Would you help us find church community? Would you help us have Sundays? Would you help us have circles and, and, and small group where people are, re, are reminding us, where we have rhythms consistently that as much as we beat ourselves up, that you have a greater narrative and a greater soundtrack. And that's what supersedes all. God, we thank you. We love you. And we celebrate you this morning. In Jesus' name.